Hello everyone and welcome to RimWorld Beta 18. The new version is here. It is a proper release. This is not the uh, uh, unstable build. Now there are two things of importance to note with Beta 18. We'll get to those in a second though because before anything else, I do want to clear an obvious question that's going to be asked before anyone has to ha uh, take time to ask it. And that is, don't worry, Dark Avax story is ongoing. We are going to finish the Alpha 17 playthrough properly. Uh, it's probably not that many episodes away from its conclusion anyway, but they're going to be running alongside the Beta 18 playthrough for the next couple of days until that's all wrapped up. There may be some shenanigans to do with mods in having two different versions of RimWorld trying to run at the same time. We'll cover uh, that when we get to it, though. We'll cross that bridge when, when we get there. Now, back to Beta 18. The two things to note. One, it's a new version, so there's new things there. A lot of new things, in fact. And whenever I first cover a new version of more or less any game, I like to cover it vanilla. I like to understand what's changed from the game rather than what's changing because of mods. Uh, so this is going to be a vanilla playthrough. There may be some mods, quality of life mods, added at some stage, but we're going to see how we can go without them to start with. The other thing to note is it's beta, not alpha. I can already tell you now, I'm going to get that confused here and there. I'm so used to, to referring to RimWorld as an alpha game that now referring it to as beta is going to be confusing for me and it'll take a little bit of time. Habits die hard. But the thing to note about the Switch to beta, at this point, all of the key game features are now locked in. We're not going to see any big key features added. So caravans have been added in, um, the ability to have multiple colonies have been added in. Those sorts of massive game-changing um, updates, no more of those are going to happen. What Tynan is now going to be focusing on is polishing the features that are there and adding more content to those features. So, for example, we will still possibly see more furniture being added into the base game, more floor types, more plants perhaps, more animal species, but nothing that will require an entire new game mechanic to integrate into the game. Now, with all of that out of the way, it's time for us to start a new colony. Now, obviously, I have mentioned this a couple of times, and with Dark Avax story not yet concluded on the room world that he's currently on this is not going to be a dark avax story this is going to be we're going to be returning to a more mellow a more chill a more nice playthrough i have a cup of chamomile tea here just to put me in the right sort of mood for this and this one's going to be an avac playthrough not a dark avac playthrough and as i've mentioned to quite a few people i feel that it's been a little while since we played a tribe we're going to be playing a tribe this time so, Lost Tribe. Five Lost Tribes people attempt to rebuild. This is a difficult mission, which I kind of like. Honestly, though, we've been playing Rich Explorer plenty, and that's the extra difficult one. I don't think we're going to have too much trouble. Lost Tribe. Your tribe was destroyed by the great blood machine sent by the gods. Five of you managed to escape. Now, it's time to build up a new home. Since we'll start poor and research will be very slow because we're, we're a, a much more primitive um, culture, this is a difficult scenario. Your faction will be a new tribe. We will start with five people chosen from eight. Now that part really interests me. The idea that we will have eight people to pick from, what will happen with the other three? Will we meet them at some point, or, or what will happen there? Now, I'm not using any mods. As I mentioned, this is a vanilla playthrough, so we don't have Prepare Carefully. So, uh, yeah, this is going to be interesting. As for the storyteller, I tend to favor Cassandra for any YouTube series because I like my YouTube series to go on for some time, and I find that the, the gradual increase in challenge, Cassandra offers a more narrative-rich experience. You start off just can get used to being in a new environment and then it just gradually ramps up challenge over time and it's very very fun randy random is more of a stream storyteller for me because it could just be three hours of really really peaceful building because randy just randomly decided to be nice or randy 
could decide to throw all of the worst things at you within the first three minutes and you're forced to restart because everyone who could doctor is currently dead or dying and the one person left refuses to do any any doctoring refuses to put out fires he's trapped in a room that is as it happens on fire etc etc it, it can it can go either way and so for a youtube series i prefer things to have a bit more of a narrative build-up that being said, and despite the fact that we're playing with a try, which is already harder, we're going to be playing on extreme. And with that, time for us to uh, look at the world. So, the seed. Mm, I could go with Avakin, but I always go with Avakin. And maybe I should always go with Avakin. I mean, what's wrong with Avakin? But uh, let's think. Well, uh, there's Av Avakis or Avakin. You know what? I often go with uh, Avakis, I should have said. Uh, we'll go with Avakin today. Avakin is more the name of my capital cities when I make them, but eh, that's fine. Uh, right, we will want 100% global coverage. Uh, yeah, we'll, we'll go with, with Avakin. We will increase the rainfall slightly, though. I like the, the maps to be a little bit wetter than, than uh, dry. And with that, going to be a while while we wait for this world to generate. <sighs> okay, here we go. Our world has been made now one thing you'll notice is all of the names i'm actually really really quite happy with this one uh let's have a look old neck rainforest we've got battle mountains i think this adds so much more depth to the game old seahorse sea oh, okay a little bit redundant there well actually i guess not redundant just uh, a lot of the same words in the name uh white meerkat ocean are meerkats well known for being in the, in the ocean? Black Bark Desert? Oh, I like them. Okay, I think I found the perfect of all places. I have looked for quite some time, actually, because it's important. Okay, we are going to be living in the Yuna's Pride Swamp near the Greenwood Plateau and the Omwe Sea. That, I'm sure I'm mispronouncing that. But we are right next to the Dead Fang Sea and uh, a little bit south of the Greenstone Sea. Uh, we're not too far away. Well, we are actually kind of reasonably far away from the Old Neck Rainforest and the Alpaca Chick Desert and the Grey Shell Ocean. I like the names of all the places nearby. We are also reasonably close to uh, a little area down here, an actual camp, but most places are far from us. We were probably one of the, the 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 tribal camps nearby, and that's why there aren't that many more. We, you know, we controlled our territory well, but then then the wrathful god machines came and wiped it out, and and now now they they may be plaguing this this tribe, the the poor sat. Let's have a look at the different uh, groups here. We've got Witobion, uh, an Outlander Union. Uh, Tiesta Confederation, another Outlander Union. The unification of Lalek, uh, Lalerico. Uh, there's a tribe, they're the ones right next to us. And the Grey Rock Concord, very hostile, another tribe. And then the Dark Killers. Okay, only one pirate band that we need to worry about, though. That's not too terribly bad. I actually quite like this. We have got a, a marvellous spread of stones. Marble, slate, and granite. All of my favourite stones and the, and the favourite spread of colours. We don't have year-round growing, which I feel makes the game a little bit too easy. So we can only grow from 50, uh, 50 to 60 days of the year. And we'll get 1.3 diseases per year. I think that's actually pretty good. And now comes the really long bit. Okay, welcome back. It took me a good 10 minutes to settle on the group that we were going to be taking. Now, we have a pretty solid representation of passions for the various team skills. Only construction is left out. We have, of course, Avak, with the childhood of a cave child. Avak grew up in a large and intricate cave complex that extended deep into the mountainside. He helped the adults maintaining and improve the deep caves. So he's a little bit better at construction and mining, but he hasn't got any uh, particular passions for that. He's also got an ambrosia addiction and a very large tolerance for it. Uh, after the tribe's elder healer was killed in a raid, Avak took on the role. He spent his days scrounging up herbs and mineral compounds from the nearby area to use in surprise surprisingly effective remedies. He's kind, and he's also a psychopath, which is kind of, well, I mean, hmm. Kind. Avak is a nice person. He has a tendency to brighten everyone else's day and never insults others. 
But being a psychopath, he has no empathy. The fact that everyone thinks he's kind is just kind of one of these weird, weird little things about life. Really, he doesn't understand it. He do doesn't try to. He doesn't. He doesn't get this whole emotion thing. The suffering of others doesn't doesn't bother me at all. He doesn't mind it if others are butchered, left unburied, imprisoned, or sold to slavery, unless it affects him directly. He also gets no mood boost from anyone else. There's there's a, there's a sort of tragic irony here. He makes everyone else around him feel good, but but is incapable of feeling good or bad about anyone around him. Uh, I have uh, He has got a passion for crafting, mining, growing, and medicine, but has got a, a particular passion for cooking. Probably one of the few joys in his life. In fact, yes, it actually gives him joy gain, which is pretty cool. Uh, we've got Ferret, the Muffalo Shaman. They were a tribe child. Ferret grew up in a tribe running around the village, moving with the buffalo herds and learning essential skills from his parents. He never learned to read and never saw a machine that wasn't an ancient ruin. In adulthood, because of his quiet wisdom and great strength, Ferret became the spiritual leader of a nomadic tribe that followed the herds of roaming buffalo. And if you're wondering, all of these names came very kindly from the Dapperdale Discord, where many, many Dapperlings volunteered themselves for the services. Future names will be chosen in the episodes themselves. Uh, ferret is pretty, stands for reason, Ferret. Steadfast, also stands for reason, fairly ferrety. Uh, ferret is mentally tough and won't break down under stress that would crack most people. I mean, Ferrets are having too much fun with life to ever get that stressed. Teetotaler. Ferret abhors the idea of gaining pleasure from chemicals and avoids alcohol and pleasurable drugs. Now, that doesn't sound like a ferret at all, frankly. Oh, uh, the amount of times they've tried to get to Pepsi. Good at shooting, though. Very good at melee. Uh, also, not too bad at uh, medicine or growing, and quite decent with crafting. Now, Kuro. Uh, Kuro had, uh, was a child tribe. Uh, uh, sorry, a tribe child, or, or, or a child tribe. Perhaps Kuro was an entire tribe, just a very small one, uh, growing up still. She never learned to read and never saw a machine that was in an ancient ruin. And then, as an adult, became a digger. Kuro and her tribe carved their home deep into the side of a mountain. Kuro feels most at home, picking through rock and so shoring up cave walls. Uh, she is a night owl. She's also quite nimble. Uh, it means she's got a very good dodge chance, actually. And uh, she gets a mood boost if she's awake between 11 p.m. and 6 a.m., but gets a mood loss if awake during 11 a.m. and 6 p.m. She's also kind. Uh, she makes everyone around her just a little bit better. Uh, that might actually affect Avak, which would be interesting. Uh, that would be an interesting one, because I don't know if that's just a, basically a social thing, like actually social interaction, or whether just the presence of Kuro would uh, would affect the mood. She's very good with animals and mining, and a little bit artistic, and likes to shoot things. Uh, seems odd, really. Villains, the war chief. Villains, wow, mad scientist, okay. Uh, villains grew up miserable, oh no, on a, the plains of a Neolithic um, planet. He found the strength to fight under the teachings of an old broken scientist. He quickly learned to play with people's fears and was nicknamed Mad Scientist. And then as an adult, was a tribal gang leader on a Neolithic planet. For him, the battlefield is a game and there is nothing more fun than the fires of war. He cannot grow, won't haul, won't cut plants. He's also a psychopath, has no empathy for anyone, uh, but is a fast walker, so moves quickly. Uh, pretty pretty good with animals, though. Actually, quite a lot of different things that will probably help with his, uh, with his mood. Probably going to have you working on research, honestly. And finally, Morvin, the cave tender. Again, a tribe child, but uh, Morvin was a cave tender as an adult. While the others were out hunting and foraging, Morvin would stay at home to cook and take care of the young and sick. Very well. You're a hard worker and you're a teetotaler. You're pretty good at growing. In fact, you're our best grower and our best cook. And not actually bad with medicine. We've got a pretty, pretty good survivable little group. Those we have left behind, however. Now, I don't know what's going to happen with, with these. Uh, hopefully, we'll meet them at some point. Maybe maybe they split off from the group as, as the uh, war machines were, were cutting apart our village. The, the, I, can, I can imagine this group kind of clustering around the Muffalo Shaman Ferret, and Ferret, in his quiet wisdom, led them down secret paths that, that only the most, the most sprightly of, of Muffalo could, could move. I, in my mind, Muffalo are more like giant goats. And so they, they managed to, to escape. But 
Evelyn, Kay, and Rhett perhaps went in a different direction. They they managed to they, they maybe hate or maybe they jumped into the river and just had like bamboo poles and breathed and just slowly floated along till they fell out of a waterfall and landed in a deep fish but not not so deep they drowned uh pond and then just washed up covered in mud the machines work, walking around couldn't see them through the mud you know how machines are uh right so uh she became a, a healer after oh so very much like avak then pretty much exactly the, oh no avak was a cave child okay so she was a tribe child and then became a healer pretty pretty similar situation i guess when the elder healer of their tribe died both avak and evelyn took on the mantle because it was too much responsibility for for one or the other to take entirely so they they split up the duties that makes sense uh she's quite artistic decent with construction cooking medicine and melee i really don't know if we're ever going to see them though which is the sad part k who is avax uh sister uh marvelous uh cave child makes sense quite a much younger sister across the file and a night owl prefers to be up at night quite a spattering of passions there and rat finally uh, a fire keeper rat was responsible for keeping the tribe's fire going he took his responsibility very seriously and then as an adult became a warrior he was a fearsome warrior proficient with many weapons he practiced in many battles uh trigger happy pretty okay so uh, rat has a pretty face which predisposes people to like him and again a psychopath our, our village i'm starting to wonder if maybe maybe uh, there was a reason why the mechanized came to our village uh hmm uh nevertheless this is the group that we're going to be starting with so uh, i will see you in the game the gods were very angry. The blood machines came at night. They swept through your village, cutting and burning your people with their blaze and their devil fire. Only a few of you escaped. Now, after a harrowing journey on foot, with no close friends to turn to, you must build a new home in the wilderness, like your ancestors did. I imagine the flight from the burning village and the screams of our kinsmen as they were butchered by the mechanoids. Uh, I imagine we, we fled with a, with a herd of muffalo. That's perhaps how we hid. And, and the muffalo, so used to ferret, they, they weren't perturbed by our presence. And perhaps we even managed to just kind of grab onto their big, thick, woolly fur and just kind of press ourselves against the side. So as the muffalo were running away, the mechanoids, you know, casually scanning the area, only saw muffalos because we were behind the muffalos, our, our legs pinned to the side, and the muffalos made their way. But on the journey, unfortunately, it was a long and harrowing journey. We had to eat all the muffalo. Oh, so terrible. Unless there is a muffalo. Is there a muffalo? No, there is not. There are, however, there's a cat named Closeness, and a cat named Callie, and a Labrador named uh, Fruit. Okay, this is this is rather rather awesome. Well, I, I guess. I mean, uh, two cats. I'm not really sure. Cats can it? nuzzling. Uh, okay, okay. I like these cats. That's fine. They can stay. Uh, I'm not sure what they're going. Oh no, maybe, maybe not. Maybe only a small part of the herd survived. But uh, unfortunately, these are harrowing times. We may have to set upon them and eat them. Wow, there's a lot more actual uh, buildings here. Uh, sorry, uh, mountains here than I was expecting. For a, for a bog. I was expecting it to be a lot less, but uh, no cave systems. I guess you only really see those on legitimately mountain maps, but oh, I'm liking this. We've already got some rooms around here. I've got a geotherm right there. What else have we got? Let's have a quick look. I know that uh, the beginning of any series does take a long time before we get to the actual meat and bones of playing, but it it's worth taking your time to look. That's why my series tend to succeed rather than fail. It's because I, I tend to build plans within plans within plans and have an idea of how I want to expand right from the beginning. Uh, I mean, these buildings, most of them are just going to get torn down. This one's going to be expanded, but that is great because that is an early heat source that we can make use of. I'm liking that a lot but i think that's where we're going to be wrapping up this episode zero quote unquote a bit of a, a very uh, story heavy setup episode but i wanted to set the scene for the series going forward in the next episode we're going to get to the gameplay so i hope you're excited for that and i hope you enjoyed this episode and i will see you in the next but until then and as always do take care everyone <laughs>